Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today I'm going over my first impressions of the Night Unison cards. I'm on Poker Beach right now, so uh, you guys can check out this on your own, just on the URL at the top. And it's going to be a quick introduction into this small 55 card Japanese set. Obviously this is going to be part of our next set, Unbroken Bonds, alongside a couple other sets, the Full Metal uh, something set and there's one other as well coming out so i mean there's a couple sets that are all gonna combine into our english ones so there'll be some other things to talk about but there's definitely some impactful stuff in this mini set so i'm gonna start over down at the trainers because i think it's always the best place to start because it can tell us about combos and stuff that we have access to now and i think usually when a new set comes out the item cards are the most impactful so uh, let's jump into those cards starting off with a pretty good one electromagnetic radar it's an item card that allows you to discard two from your hand. If you do, search your deck for any uh, for two of any combination of Lightning, GX, and EX Pokemon. Reveal them and put them into your hand. So this is a really strong card. It's like a double Ultra Ball style effect for exactly Lightning Pokemon, GX, and EX. Obviously, there's the Pikachu Zekrom Tag Team GX deck, which is going to be playing the likes of Zeraora GX, Tapu Koko GX, Pikachu Zekrom GX, which is really awesome. There's a new Dedenne GX as well in this set, which is a huge thing for this card in particular. And it seems to be absolutely incredible for, like I said, these lightning style GX based decks. It's going to be a really huge card because it allows you to get draw power whilst also getting your board set up. So I think because of the Dene GX, this card is incredible. You can Volkner this card out as well and then still get draw from the Dene. So it seems really awesome as a card. And I think it's going to really push, once again, the Pikachu Zekrom archetype even further. Uh, as well as other like Zero Aura based Coco builds. And I think this is really awesome. It's like an Olivia supporter, but in an item card, and you have to pay two to discard, but you really don't mind that. So it's a huge tool for lightning decks, for sure. Next up, we have Surprise Box. You get to choose a card from your opponent's discard pile and put it into their hand. Usually giving someone hand advantage is really bad. Uh, there's the like weird synergy of trying to make, as you can see on the picture, the Gengar combo work when you use it with Poltergeist to guarantee extra damage. So I think that's like the only application, but I think Poltergeist is not an attack worth chasing to the point of playing Surprise Box, to be honest. I think it's pretty bad of an item. Uh, Poker Gear 3.0 is a really awesome reprint of an old Poker Gear. You get to look at the top seven cards of your deck, choose a supporter card you find there, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle the rest of the cards of your deck. I think this has a place in the format for sure. I think it's a nice search option. It's like a great ball, but for a supporter, which is awesome. You can improve your outs to get some specific supporters. I think most notably, this is going to be like a four of in the Gyarados deck that only plays four Elm and four Crash Awake. You really improve your stats with this card. And I think uh, it's genuinely very good for a Gyarados build, which is pretty interesting off the top of my head. But I can see this just being versatile and good in a lot of decks that just want to play a small core of supporters, but some very, very impactful, important ones. Rather than have to flesh out your deck with subpar supporters, you can just play the top quality ones and you know increase your chances of hitting those cards. Um, so it's pretty nice in like some speedy combo decks that only really wants to play a couple supporters and then just rely on like a Rangaroo to draw you extra cards or uh, let loose as well. Uh, so you're not clogged with uh, too many supporters. Obviously, the downside is we're almost always playing Guzma uh, in the format, and I know it's not like random receiver where you just hit the Guzma and you get nothing else, but you know, it's more sort of dead cards. So you're always going to have to play some amount of supporters in there. And you can't just play like four speed supporters and then four of these and get away with it. you still got to have some other stuff in there. A Secret Hood is an item card. That's when you attach it to one of your Pokemon. You prevent all effects of your opponent's abilities done to the Pokemon this card is attached to. Pretty interesting. Uh, I can't see many applications for this card right now. Um, I don't think it's all that strong, to be honest. Uh... Yeah, I can't really see a place for this card. Maybe I'm just missing some combos. This is a nice, like, denial thing. If you're worried about any specific ability uh, going straight on to your guys, like a Decidueye ping or something like that, we're getting the Metal Goggles, which is a very uninspiring card from uh, the set in Team Up. I'm not seeing reason to play that, and that already has a minus 30 reduction of hit points. Um, and Secret Hood doesn't have anything like that, but... I guess the trade-off is that it's universal and any deck can play it. So that's interesting. We get a couple other Fairy Charms. Fairy Charm Lightning comes into the set. Uh, preventing all damage done to your Fairy Pokemon by 
your opponent's uh, EX and GX lightning types. Obviously, there are quite some powerful lightning types coming out uh, in team up. So this is you know quite notable for those sorts of matchups. The fairy charms really haven't seen play so far. Uh, this has a reasonable chance of being played just to try and you know turn a very bad matchup into a good matchup for a fairy deck, but. Uh, it would only have to be if Pikachu Zekrom is super popular, and even then they have non-GX attackers in like Zapdos and stuff. Maybe like a Sylveon could play it and never get one shot by Pikachu Zekrom style decks, but that's really quite niche in my opinion. The Fairy Charm ability is also a potentially powerful one, preventing all the damage done to this card uh, by attacks from your opponent's GX and EX Pokemon with abilities. This covers a vast variety of cards from Zoroark to Gardevoir to... All sorts of things. There's lots of Pokemon out there with abilities. That's powerful. It's uh, one of the most universal Fairy Charms that we've seen. And I think the fact that they're so niche is the reason why the Fairy Charms haven't seen play up until this point. And Fairy Charm ability is the most versatile and covers the most broad range of attackers. Uh, so it has potentially the most um, power behind it of all the Fairy Charms. And... Uh, it's like you're playing almost like a Garbodor deck. You're basically shutting down the use of their attacking abilities. So it's sort of targeting them in a different way, which is very interesting. I think it is one of the best fairy charms we've seen. But they're still uninspiring cards overall, I would say. We gain a supporter, Janine. Uh, you get to look at the top four cards of your deck. Choose two of them and put them into your hand. Shuffle the remaining cards into your deck. So it's similar to a uh, Underground Expedition supporter. But it's from the top instead of from the bottom. Um, and then you shuffle afterwards. I think it's fairly average slash weak. I don't think it's stronger than a lot of cards we have already in the format for supporters, but bear in mind the text of Janine might come in important when we look at another Pokemon later in this set. Koga's Trap is a supporter card. Your opponent's active is poisoned and confused. Um, again, Koga's Trap is a keyword that we need to keep an eye on for an attacker later down the line. Poison at the moment is just doing plus 10 damage, so it's like way worse than a Kukui in most situations. If we have some poison buffs, or if we have like Verbank City Gym or something like that, it would be additional damage to start thinking about. And obviously it's not just helping us reach a knockout, which Kukui is normally trying to do. Uh, poison, you know, stays in play, forces people to switch, especially with Confusion. So it's comparable to something like Kukui, but you're not drawing cards. So it's a little bit weaker than Kukui in general, I would say. Again, the keyword is the most important thing to take out of this because there's a Pokemon that wants to see Koga's Trap being played. Uh, but yeah, potentially has more options in something like Expanded where we have Verbank and Survipers to sort of combine together to do a lot of damage. Obviously, Survipers in Standard, um, but I feel like you don't really want to have a deck that's just like for Survipers, lots of Koga's Traps and other stuff like that. And like some just one attachment attackers. I think that's probably weak. Uh, but... Yeah, you can rack that damage up really easily with the stadium. Lieutenant Surge's Battle is a supporter card that's got a lot of people talking. Uh, it's allowing you to play three supporter cards this turn, including this one. Uh, that's pretty cool, right? So the effect does uh, the effect can't stack with multiple surge, so it's it's uh, just letting you play three instead of the text of two more. So bear that in mind. We can't sort of just go. Surge supporter, surge supporter, surge supporter, surge, surge supporter. Uh, but there's still fear for this guy. Uh, fear specifically in the likes of Zorok control decks and mill variants. Uh, because you can use it with Lusamine. And mill decks can essentially now go surge, Lusamine for Lusamine and surge. And then play your proactive disruption card. You can play the Ace of that turn or the Plumeria that turn or the Stevens Resolve that turn whilst also recovering a Surge for next turn and a Lusamine for next turn. Now, in con in control decks that aren't Zoroark, I think this card is still powerful. I think it's only probably a two count, because you will only be able to use this effect whilst you still have the supporters in your hand, right? So there'll be a point where you run out of Plumerias and Acerolas and, you know, Skull Grunts and stuff like that, and that's when you'll just have to be going, fine, I'll Lusamine these back. But every now and then you'll have this turn where if you have the proactive supporter that's right in your hand, you can then go Surge, Lusamine for Lusamine and Surge, or Lusamine and Disruption Supporter, and then insta-play that Disruption Supporter. Um, and that's very powerful. 
So that's really, really disgusting to sort of think about. Obviously, we have Stephen's resolve to try and get this sort of combination of Surge and Lusamines in our hand alongside the Disruption supporters. So it's going to be really annoying to sort of deal with this. I think it's most dangerous in Zoro Control, though, because you can always trade into supporters. So essentially, you can go Surge. You don't need to Lusamine. You can just go... Oh, sorry. You don't need to Lusamine back Surge. So you can... Surge, Lusamine, the Disruption card that you need at the time, and then play the Disruption card that you need, and then Resource Management back in the Surge. Uh, so essentially, the, the three-card cycle that I was saying with the Control deck now can be done every single turn, and you never need to Lusamine back the Surge as one of your supporters, which is kind of like a waste. Now you can Lusamine back the correct uh, supporter for the occasion, right? You can get back the Ace if you've just been hit. You can get back the Plumeria if you need to do that. You can get back the Guzma if you need to stall that turn. And that's the key. It's all that turn. It reminds me of uh, Sable Garb when it had puzzles. Uh, you didn't have to Junk Hunt back Crushing Hammer VS Seeker. You could just grab those puzzles and then be able to react to whatever your opponent did on that turn um, to the best of your ability. So the Surge kind of lets you do that aspect with the Zoroark control. And that's what's really dangerous about the card. I think in not control decks and... Uh, not Zoroark control in, in particular. It doesn't see play. But I think in those decks, it will see play and it will be annoying to deal with. Uh, Electro Power gets a reprint. E Hammer gets a reprint. Max Potion gets a beautiful artwork reprint. And so does Guzma. But then we will jump back to the top and have a look at some of these Pokemon. The Venomoth GX is the card that wants to see uh, the Janine and the uh, Koga's Trap being played because it increases its damage output. So first of all, 200 hit point grass type, one retreat cost, weak to fire, nothing too shabby there. For grass DC, you do Secret of the Ninja, 110 base. If you played a Koga's Trap from hand this turn, you do 90 more damage. So remember, we're already doing poison. So that's essentially, we're hitting 210 that turn, which is obviously a key number to try and hit. And uh, if you play Janine from hand this turn, during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon from the attacks of your opponent's basic Pokemon. So... <clears throat> it's similar to uh, like a Zygarde GX uh, is attack, where it's trying to deny some damage coming into it in the next turn. Uh, also similar to a Jolteon GX's uh, GX attack, where you deny damage coming into you. This is just uh, from basics, so it's getting a lot of the tag teams, a lot of GX Pokemon, and a lot of the sort of non-GX techs that people will play. So it covers a, a wide basis here. <coughs> Obviously, if you're not against basic decks uh, using the Janini is pretty weak and uh, when you're playing against uh, stuff that has more than uh, 210 hit points the Koga's Trap is a little bit weak but we do also have things like the uh, Lurantis or Surviper we can do to increase that damage output even further. I think the biggest downside is that you don't really want to be playing Janine or Koga's Trap they're kind of weak uh, and we still need to rely on setup. We need to be digging into our DCEs, our backup attackers, um, and Koga's Trap doesn't help us draw cards, and Janine is allowing us to draw cards, but not very well. You know, you get to look at the top four, and you get some extra stuff. So if you're ever going to play Venomoth, I think you need to have a good backup draw engine, maybe some Pidgeotos in there, maybe some uh, Zeb Strikers, or even just Zoroark. I think Zoroark has a better partner already, in um, Galissapod um, as a grass type for coverage, but I think uh, its two attacks are a little bit on the awkward side just because of the supporters you have to play. I mean, think about something like Garchomp, where it had to play Cynthia, which was an excellent supporter, and it never saw play because you just don't want to be using Cynthia at times. Sometimes you want to use Guzma. Sometimes you need to. Sometimes you just don't even have Cynthia in your hand, and these are the sorts of awkward things that come to my mind when you see that Secret of the Ninja attack. The uh, GX attack is actually a big selling point for this card, though, in general. Uh, for a colorless, you're able to do 60, shuffle your hand into your deck and draw 10. So you know what I was saying, that you need some extra sort of draw support from Janine and Koga? Well, the GX, attack, uh, the GX attack is trying to make it so that you don't need that. You can get that big 10 card hand early, have those options, so you, you're allowed to use these Janines and your Kogas for the big turns. The thing is, yeah, it's possible, but people can still hit you with Judge or Let Loose, and then you're back in that really crummy situation. So... Although the GX attack is strong, um, I think it's a little bit awkward for you overall. 
Uh, the Victory Bell line is entirely unimpressive. The Grubbin notably has 60 hit points, which is pretty cool if you want to be playing an Elm engine. Uh, it can help you grab two Lightning Pokemon and put them into your hand, which is somewhat of a useful attack if you're thinking about playing a Vika Vault deck. There's a new Vika Vault in this uh, set, and there's also a Charger Bug, which is really powerful in this set as well. So that might become a relevant attacker, and it might be better than the 70 hit point Grubbin if you're looking to play a full-on Vika Vault deck, which, you know, might be the case if you uh, think the Charger Bug's good enough. Um, Tentacruel is very unimpressive. The Seeking is a big old meme. Uh, for a Water Energy, you get to do Excited Horn. You do 30 and you flip two coins, it does 30 for each heads. If this has a tool attached, you get to flip six coins instead. So slap that Choice Band on and put down your Victini, uh, your Fliptini, and start going nuts with Excited Horn. Lots of dice rolling around the board everywhere. And uh, overall, I think it's probably too weak, but definitely a fun and spicy meme. Uh, white, uh, sorry, not white Kyrim, just normal Kyrim. Uh, 130 hit point basic with two attacks. Cold Call allows you to search your deck for a water energy and attach it to this Pokemon, uh, which is like fine, I guess. And Hail Prison for water, water, colorless. Discards two water from himself and your opponent's active is now paralyzed. So you're trying to lock people out. Obviously, Paralysis is really weak in a format where we have Ace Rhoda and Guzma. People get around it all the time. We even have Dawn Wings if we really want to. So in another format, this card would be terrifyingly powerful because Paralysis used to be insane. And uh, it's quite easy to replenish these Water Energies when you have Aqua Patches and you have Naganadal Quagsire as a potential backup engine. Uh, so this would have been nuts if Guzma wasn't printed, but... Paralysis just doesn't mean anything in this format, unfortunately. Uh, Froakie and Frogadier. We have a new Pikachu. Artwork appreciation, always important. We have this really confusing Raichu. It has 120 hit points, stage one. It has this colorless attack called Never Give Up. You can use this attack only if you have three or more prize cards remaining than your opponent. And you get to attach all lightning energy cards on your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way that you like. It's really weird. It's called Never Give Up. It's flavorful, but if you're already three prizes or more behind and you're spending another turn not doing any damage or taking any prizes, it doesn't matter how many energies on the board, you lost. Like, you, you definitely lost. Yeah, it's really weird. It's like, it should just be called Just Give Up. Uh, it's so stupid. Okay, the Den AGX, definitely the highlight, I think, of this set. Very, very powerful. 160 hit point lightning basic. Remember we talked about that lightning item that can search this guy out. It is weak to fighting, which is always a headache when Buzzwall, well, Baby Buzzwall and Buzzwall GX are both around. So I believe that will keep those cards kind of relevant. Um, and it comes with this ability, Dead Charge, or Change, sorry. Uh, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to your bench, you may discard your hand and draw six cards. You can only use one Dede Change ability per turn. So it's almost a Professor Sycamore, but it's on an ability. That is nuts. That's absolutely insane. You get to see so many cards when you use a Dede Change. It's, you know, it's comparable to a Shaman EX, uh, but you have 160 hit points, which is way better than Shaman EX because 110 is embarrassing amount of HP. Uh, obviously, big for combo decks, big for, big for just hitting the things that you need on a turn. Uh, to be honest, I think it's really, really powerful. Um, obviously going to be in a whole load of decks. Um, usually, I think, unlike Shaman, where sometimes in turbo decks it was like a two or three of because you could spam as many Shamans as you, as you wanted on turn one to literally thin your deck out completely. Uh, Dedene will be a one or two of, I think. Maybe just a one of with an extra stretcher thrown in to decks. Because uh, you can only use it once per turn. And 160 hit points is still a big liability. Similar to uh, Tapu Lele GX. Uh, we've seen 170 is a liability. 160 is equally the case, if not more so. Um, especially because Zoroark players can go um, Choice Band Stadium Guzma. Uh, whereas against Lele's they can't do that. Um, so, yeah, I think the hit points is a big liability, but I think it's just going to be played in everything because it lets you draw so many cards in a single turn. Uh, I think it's absolutely nuts. It's two attacks, Lightning Colors does 50, and Zappy Return GX for, again, Lightning Colors does 50. Your opponent's active is now paralyzed. Return this Pokemon and all cards attached to it to your hand. 
you can only use one GX attack per game. Again, it's a lightning type. If there's a lightning deck that is using like Coco Prism Star, you could power this up in a turn and get it off your board with its GX attack if you really wanted to. But the lightning decks typically want to use other GX attacks most of the time. Here's this really interesting Charger Bug. 80 hit points with the ability Battery. Once in your turn, if this card is in your hand, you may attach it as a special energy card to your Vikavolt or Vikavolt GX. It provides two lightning energy to the Pokemon it is attached to. So again, it's one of these interesting stage ones that tries to push an archetype. And we have an interesting uh, Vikavolt GX and we obviously have strong charge. So being able to power up a Vikavolt GX with one charge above attachment plus a strong charge is pretty interesting. The, uh, um, what's it called? The Vikavolt GX uh, does 180 for four attachments and this could be really awesome. I believe it does take up your attachment for turn, um, but don't quote me on that. I think I need to still see a uh, full ruling on this, but from what I know about previous uh, cards similar to this, it reminds me of the like Holland's Electrode and Holland's Magneton and stuff like that. I believe it would count as your attachment for turn. Uh, if it's in addition to your attachment for turn, it's clearly off the charts powerful. Uh, but if it's your attachment for turn, which I imagine it would be, um, it's still very strong for exactly a Vika Vault, Vika Vault deck. And you'll just play more rescue stretches anyway to get more usage out of these because they're just really strong. Uh, the other Vika Vault that we gain in this set has the Stealth Body Ability. If there's a stadium in play, this card has no weakness. I think it's, you know, it's fine, I guess. And Lightning Strike for Lightning, Lightning, Lightning Colorless does 120. You may Discord discard all lightning from this pokemon if you do it does 100 more damage it's a lot of discards obviously you can try and play it with uh the strong charge and your charger bug get it powered up in one turn and you can do uh 220 which is a lot you can just play a full non-gx build of this strong charge and your charge bugs i don't know if it's better to play the gx and try and like tank some hits with that or just to play this one um both of them do really good numbers, so that's interesting. And I foresee there being some Vika Vault base builds, thanks to that Charger Bug mostly. And this could be an option, but I imagine you want to play the GX, personally. Uh, Zero Aura can do a big burst damage with Discharge. Discard all Lightning from this Pokemon, does 50 for each card you discarded in this way. Um, I think usually we're using our Coco Prism Star to blow itself up and attach to other things than this guy for the most part. We already have Zapdos as an incredible non-GX attacker in those sorts of decks. Marshadow is coming out in the same set as the Dedene, which is really interesting because the Dedene is like, oh, fighting stuff, it could be back. And then they're like, just joking, we have a colorless psychic attacker that can knock out all your buzzwalls. Get back in the binder. It's really crazy, this card. I think it's, again, one of the strongest cards in the set alongside the Dedene, to be honest. Uh, it has the ability Reset Hole. Once during your turn, you may discard any stadium in play. If you do, put this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your discard pile. Notably, Prism Star Stadiums cannot get around abilities. So this is like a better field blower in a lot of decks, which is great. As long as you have bench space, you can just go get rid of anything, which is reason enough to play this card in a lot of, a lot of decks um, instead of just an extra stadium card for yourself because it gives you that awesome protection against fighting decks because you have red knuckles for a single colorless energy literally any deck can play this 10 damage if your opponent's active is an ultra beast you do 60 more so 70 for one 100 for one with choice band if you're going up against most gx's it means you can knock out um, baby buzz and it means you can knock out big buzz and that's really scary i think those decks fall off the map even though dedene gx comes into the format because this guy comes in if ever you're playing Dedene, think about playing this card if you're worried about any Buzzwell decks. It also sort of lights the path even more for the likes of Pikachu Zekrom because it can play this as a tech card. And I think it's just an absolutely excellent card. Uh, very, very powerful. Um, we've seen this sort of ability before on like a really, really old EX era Taurus. Um, and that's all play because it had that ability and also could do Call for Family. And I think this is similar where it has this amazing ability but also the utility for a certain couple of matchups and i think that's just really really powerful uh whooper and quagsire we gain uh they're pretty interesting the quagsire obviously one of my favorites the uh, washout quagsire this one is a fighting type but uses water attachments so similar to how we've seen some quagnag builds adding in onyx to the deck 
Now you can just have an even thicker Quagsire line and have fighting type coverage for Pikachu Zekrom and Zoroark decks. And I think that's very, very powerful. So I think this card is very good for the Nag Quag builds exactly. Uh, Gligar and Gliscor, nothing really to see here. For our first Tag Team GX, we have Greninja and Zoroark GX. 250 hit point, basic Pokemon, weak to fighting, and has resistance to Psychic with two retreat cost. Has two attacks, both costing Dark and Colorless. You do 30 plus 30 more for each Dark Energy attached to your Pokemon. That's really powerful. It's similar to uh, Dark Rai EX's Dark Pulse attack, which was, you know, a Turbo Dark Rai deck for a long time, where we had Elixirs. Uh, in the format, and um, at the moment we don't have much energy acceleration for a basic Pokemon, but we do have this Knight Unison GX attack that can help us get there. Again, for that Dark Colorless, we get to put two in any combination of Dark Pokemon GX or EX from our discard pile onto our bench. If this Pokemon has at least one extra energy attached to it, you can attach two energy cards from your discard pile to each of those Pokemon, which is absolutely nuts. You can, like, recover a, a Greninja Zoroark and get two energy straight onto it so it's ready to go in the back. You can get most notably any any uh, Dark GX or EX so it's not just basics. You can grab yourself an Incineroar GX that has that Scar Charge ability that allows you to attach three Dark Energies to it. Straight away that's a 390 damage even if you're not doing the, um, the extra attachment uh, part of the GX attack. So if you get two Incineroars into your discard pile, that's a GX attack that then sets up at least 180 damage for your next turn's Dark Pulse. So as soon as you do that GX attack, I think the priority for this deck is find Incineroars, bin Incineroars, Knight Unison, get those on the board, and start swinging with that Dark Pulse as quickly as possible for massive one-shots. I think that's pretty much the plan here. Uh, we've actually seen a similar GX attack from ho -Oh GX trying to get back things from our discard pile and like cheat evolutions into play, it's not really done anything. Um, but the Ho-Oh's is much more expensive than this, and I think we have better synergy with exactly Incineroar to try and get into play. I think additionally, if you just don't want to go down the GX attack route, you can just try this with like Naganadels and E-Switches and stuff, because they're also very, very strong at getting lots of energies onto your board, as we've already seen. So I think that also has a lot of potential. This is a powerful card. <coughs> and again, if we're worried about fighting stuff, uh, we can play that Marshallow and a few other tech cards, and we'll be feeling a lot better about ourselves. We even have the Black Market Prism Star. We have a few other cards. Dangerous Drills can help us get rid of uh, Incineroars. We have Nanu as well for lots of combos if we want to just start with like a Hooper and then turn it into a Greninja Zoroark to sort of protect it in the early turns. Uh, that could also be a play that we go for. Sharpedo, I think, is worse than Naganadel, especially because Naga is also a psychic type and can help us even more at helping our type coverage. Uh, but this is potentially another card you can use alongside the Greninja Zoroark to get energies into play. Greedy Evolution is the ability when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve. Uh, you may look at the top six cards of your deck, choose any Dark Energy you find, and attach them to this Pokemon. I think overall, like I just said, weaker than Nag, less searchable than Nag, doesn't help you... Uh, cover weaknesses like Naganadel does. Um, so I think it's just worse than that option that we have. Uh, Greninja is a stage two dark type that has bring down for two DC, or sorry, two colorless or a DCE. You get to choose a Pokemon with the fewest hit points, excluding this one, and that Pokemon is knocked out. So it's the bring down attack that we've seen from Gardevoir level X way back when. A very powerful attack. Uh, you can definitely finish things off. I think the idea is that you're going to be using Frogadiers and Greninja GX to put your opponent's stuff into the lowest amount of hit points and then just bring them down for those prizes. Could be an interesting one of in a Greninja GX based deck. Uh, seems it has free retreat and DC attack cost anyway that works in a Greninja deck. I think that's very interesting. Miss Slash I don't think you'll ever be using because it's not strong enough. Malamar not too important. The God of our Sylveon has been tearing up Japan. I think it's a very powerful card again. 260 hit point, basic tag team GX fairy type. Weak to metal, uh, which is a little bit scary when there's things like Dublade and Bisharp around. Uh, it has a nice weakness, oh, sorry, resistance to dark. Two retreat cost again, and it comes with free attacks. Fairy Song, allowing you to search your deck for up to two fairy energy and attach them to your bench Pokemon in any way that you like. Then shuffle your deck. 
Um, really good versatility, very good early game acceleration that you just have available to you. It reminds me of Xerneas' Geomancy, but even more flexible because uh, you can put them anywhere, uh, which is really cool. Not just two, you could put two onto one target rather than just having to split them onto two targets. And then you have uh, Collider Storm, which is uh, for Fairy Fairy Colorless, 150 damage. Choose any number of energy attached to your Pokemon in play and rearrange them in any way that you like. Again, that's a bananas effect. Remember Yveltal EX and how uh, Y Cyclone would help, you know, remove energies from itself so that you were never fully committing to one attacker? Well, Kalina Storm can do that if they're trying to just smash into this Gardevoir and it's going to go down. You can do this 150 and just move all the energy off it onto another attacker. Or alternatively, if uh, you've powered up energies onto the bench, got this guy powered up, um, done this attack and they're, you know, they have no way of hitting 260 next turn. You can put all the energies from your bench to itself and it can move into its Miracle Magical GX attack. For three fairy energy, you do 200. But if you have an additional three extra fairy energy attached, uh, your opponent shuffles their hand into their deck. They have no hand anymore. They, they, they have no options. That's insane. Even in a format where we have Oranguru, Pidgeotto, Swampert, Zebstriker, Zoroark, that's still a huge threat. 200 is taking out a big GX a lot of the time, uh, alongside things like Choice Band for sure. Uh, and when you're a Fairy deck, it's not impossible to get this amount of energies into play. When you have Fairy Song, when you have uh, Gardevoir as well, being able to, uh, the GX, the normal GX, being able to uh, Secret Spring, even Naganadel, if you're using Collider Storm, you can move energies like straight onto yourself from Nagas again uh, and get that powered up out of nowhere. Uh, so I think that's, again, really, really strong. Giving your opponent no hand size is nuts, especially because you can combine this with a Guzma. You're like, oh, that's your Swampert. Come here, dead, no hand. What are you going to do? Like, they, like, what can people do with no hand? It's disgusting. It's like the uh, uh, delinquent red card expanded Zoroark deck. Just play, like, making someone play with no hand is ridiculous. It's so, so bad. No one wants to play with no hand. They have no options. They have one draw for turn. They get lucky or they don't. It's really, really disgusting. I think this Jet's attack is too powerful. Really, really gross. And I think it's easy to get set up as well because of its Collider Storm attack. Oh, what are you doing, Pokemon? Um, Clefable does nothing. Whoops. The Togekiss doesn't do enough. It heals Fairy Pokemon, but who cares? Aromatisse doesn't do enough. Rashkate doesn't do enough. Licky Licky doesn't do enough. So that's it. Uh, that is the set. I think the key cards are the Electromagnetic Radar. I think the um, Lieutenant Surge is something to be worried about. I think the Sylveon Gardevoir, very, very strong tag team. I think the uh, Zoroark Greninja is also potentially quite powerful. Um, and I think the Charger Bug might bring about a new Stage 2 deck, which is interesting. The Dene is my pick of the set, for sure. I think it's definitely just really, really versatile and strong. And I think that's really it. I think the Venomoff is probably not going to work. I think the Grubbin's a small nod to him with his 60 hit points, but that's really about it. Let me know what you guys think about my first impressions of Night Unison. Was there a combo that I'm missing? Am I over or underselling a card? Let me hear it all down below, and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. For now, though, that's my first impressions of Night Unison. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you for another video tomorrow.